Hi, my name is Troy Carruthers with the WS Darley Company. I'm the compressed air foam system product manager for Darley. And uh, in the next few minutes, what I'm going to show you is something that will help promote the long lasting, uh, correct operation of your Darley AutoCAF system. One of the things I like to uh, recommend people do every year is to flush out your foam pro. You might be asking, how do we flush out our foam pro? Well, it's pretty easy to do on any Darley fire apparatus. And I'm going to show you using basically nothing more than a five gallon pail of water, some warm water. Um, I'll show you how to do just that. We'll start by opening up the side panel on the um, passenger side of the vehicle where we can access our foam control valve. I always like to drop this uh, front folding step and then again our magical pail of uh, fresh warm water. You do want to pay particular attention to make sure that your handle here is pointed towards the outside so that we don't scratch up this nice stainless steel pump panel. Uh, essentially what you're going to do are two things. You're going to shut off your foam tank using our three-way foam supply valve. We're going to divert the foam, or in this case water that's being pumped through the foam pump, out the calibrate flush valve. And I'll give you some close-up views of those now. So once again, as I was saying, we're going to turn our foam tank off and turn our overboard pickup valve on. So by turning this valve 90 degrees, we've shut our foam tank off and our flow is now going from our overboard pickup, which is inside of here. We have a three quarter inch, three foot long or about four foot long hose. We can go ahead and insert our foam pickup hose into our five gallon pail of warm water. And then we also have a valve in here to switch it to calibrate flush and then this um, smaller half inch diameter hose will pump um, after it recirculates the water through this pickup hose and into the foam supply valve through the foam pump out of the discharge side of the foam pump and rather than injecting it into the water pump it's going through this calibrate flush hose which you can see here and I'll just have that setting here by the, alongside this five gallon pail so that we can see the the, um, the contaminants or anything that's coming out of that pump itself. So here you can see again, we've got the three quarter inch hose into our pail of water. The hose goes up and around and into the bottom of our three way valve where it will be sucking foam out of this pail or sucking water in this case out of this pail through the foam pump, through the discharge side of the foam pump, out of the calibrate inject hose and out into this hose here. Now, the thing that we need to do next is we need to get the foam pump running. So let's go over to the other side of the vehicle where I'll show you how to uh, turn the master switch on and how to uh, force the foam pump into a pumping um, situation without actually having to put the pump in gear. Alright, so here's the foam pro control that we're going to be using here shortly to turn on and getting our foam pro running. But in order to do so, we have to first go into the chassis cab and um, turn on the master power switch. And all we need is just the master power switch in this case, not the ignition. We do not need the vehicle running. We don't need the pump engaged. We'll go ahead and turn on our panel lights so we get a little bit more light here. And you can see that this Foam Pro, because it's an advanced feature controller, automatically defaults itself to the on position. For right now, what I want you to do is to shut that off so that you do not have your on light on yet. The only light you should see is directly under the word flow. Now, all of these Foam Pros have a very nice, unique capability of being able to put in what, you know, of being put into what's called simulated flow mode. In simulated flow mode, we can force the foam pump pistons to start to pump foam, or in this case water, because we're flushing out the foam pump. We can force the foam pump into operation even though the automatic paddle wheel flow meter isn't showing any uh, actual movement. The paddle wheel in this case is showing us zero GPM. So turning on the foam pump does nothing other than enables it and has it ready for when that paddle wheel starts to spin. But we can send that foam pro a fake signal by pushing both the up and the down arrows at the same time. But as I said, I want this foam um, valve or the foam uh, on light, I want that turned off so that I can show you what's going on. If we push both the up and the down buttons at the same time, 
This will show us a number, a three digit number commonly, somewhere between 50 and in this case over 428 uh, gallons per minute. I typically like to set this it, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. You need something. This is just what's going to be triggering the, the foam pump to pump just as if, let's say we're flowing 295 gallons per minute. And it will do so just as if the foam pump is set at 0.3%. I also like to bump that up a little bit. I like to go to 1% just so we get this foam pump running at a pretty decent speed. We'll go ahead and push our select button back to our flow. Now when I push the on button, and it's nice to have a partner do this for you so that you can make sure that the, the hoses stay in the pail when this foam pump kicks on. But when you push this on button, it's going to start pumping just as if it's trying to inject 1% foam concentration into 295 gallons of water per minute. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on button on and you'll hear it running. And there goes the foam pump. And it's running. So now we need to go around the other side of the vehicle and check the status of what's going on. So we should be getting a little bit of, uh, we'll be getting some of the foam that's in that foam pump originally because we had the foam tank turned on and eventually it will get recirculated with plain water. So we've created a basically a, a closed loop here where we're drawing water from this nice warm clean pail of warm water up through this three quarter inch hose, around the loop, and up this other side into this foam supply valve, or in this position we've got it in the auxiliary pickup mode. That water's going through the strainer, through the foam pump itself, and then out of the foam pump into this little diverter valve, through this half inch hose, which exits here in my hand. Now I can let this run for quite any, you know, as long as I'd like. Basically, uh, with this closed loop here, this foam pump could run for, for hours and hours um, because the, the water that's in this pail is being used to lubricate and cool those pistons of that, of that foam pump. And what's good about this, by using warm water, as over the course of the year, as that Class A foam sits, especially if you don't use your system very often, the, uh, the valves and the seats inside this piston pump will start to get a little bit of debris or a little bit of sludge built up. And by letting this foam pump kind of stretch its legs with some nice clean warm water, it uh, definitely keeps that foam pump working much, much more, um, much freely, much more freely. I'm going to go back over to the, uh, the pump panel here. Now that I'm back here at the pump panel, I like to even run the uh, foam pump a little harder, make it stretch its legs a little bit more by increasing the flow. And you should hear that foam pump speed up. You can do it by either increasing the flow number using your up arrow or using the select button, move it over to the percentage mode and then you can crank up the percentage. That gets that foam pump really humming. You can hear it over there on the other side. There will reach a point where the foam pump will be wide open. When it's running wide open, what you'll see on this display screen is the words high flow. There we've reached high flow. High flow basically means you have reached the upper echelon and that foam pump is running wide open. It can't run any faster. So I like to stretch its legs to the point where the high flow comes on and then I back it back down. We'll bring our GPM flow meter for the simulated flow back down to well, let's make it a nice even 200. And we'll bring our percentage back down to the normal 0.3%. All right, so that this is simulating a 200 gallon per minute water flow 
set at 0.3%, and this is the quantity of foam that's used every minute, you know, or every second basically, as this water is squirting out of here, you can see how much we're using. This is the quantity of foam that's being used whenever you're flowing 200 gallons a minute of water out of your calf system at a 0.3% ratio, which is the standard calf's operating ratio. So you can see it's a very small trickle of foam that's being injected into the water pump to treat that 200 gallons a minute of water with a 0.3% foam concentration. So it's a very, very efficient use of your Class A foam when making calves. All right, but enough about that. When we're all done, all we have to do is go back to that foam pro pump. Take a walk around the vehicle here. We go back to the foam pro pump, and you can simply push the on off button. We'll go back here to the flow setting. Hit both up and down arrows at the same time again. This number will ramp down, cutting its value in half until it gets down to the question mark, down to zero. Once you're down to zero, you're all done. This is the normal operating mode when you see it just in the flow mode with a zero. If you turn it on right now, it would require opening one of your calf's discharges and getting some water flowing or getting your deck gun flowing or getting your uh, number four discharge, any of your foam capable discharges. Once you got them flowing and opened a valve, this would then read in flow and it would start injecting foam. Okay, but first things first, now that we've flushed out the foam pump, I also highly recommend that before you put the truck back into service, come back around here, turn your auxiliary pickup here to the back to the normal from tank position, and once you're in the from tank position, I like to run the foam pump again for another 10 seconds or so just to pull fresh Class A foam from your foam tank down through the foam valve, through the strainer, through the pump itself, and into your inject position on this foam pump. Now, I like to leave it in calibrate flush for a few seconds and then we'll shut it off because the last time you had this foam pump in operation, you had foam, pure Class A foam, all the way up to this point. So there's really no reason to run it into the inject position. We just want to make sure that we get good solid foam, good 100% concentrate foam all the way up to this point so that the next time we go out to a fire, we don't have to evacuate all of the water that's in this system out of the system. So now we'll just go back to that pump panel and as you might have already guessed we're going to go back into simulated flow back into simulated flow we'll go ahead and crank up the percentage here just a little bit whoops I went past it We'll crank the percentage up to one turn on the foam pump for a second or a few seconds that should be plenty run our percentage back down to 0.3 go back here to the simulated flow shut it off and now we should be all done. Now we've pre-primed the foam from the foam tank so that we're getting good solid 100% foam concentrate back from the foam tank through the valve through the foam pump itself now we can switch back to the inject position now with this at the inject and this pointed at from tank we're back in a normal mode we can roll up our hoses and uh, and put her all away so again, I recommend flushing out your Foam Pro system at least once every year uh, just to help ensure a good, clean operating foam pump. It's a good way to get it to stretch its legs and uh, ensure the system's going to be clean the next time you use it for fighting a fire. Thanks for taking your time to watch this video and I hope it proves to be helpful. If you should have any questions, please contact me. Again, my name is Troy Carruthers at Darley. You can reach me via email at my full name, Troy Carruthers, at Darley.com, or even easier, my initials, TMC, at Darley.com, or you can also reach me by phone, which is uh, area code 715-720-2667. Thank you.